Hello everyone and welcome to my review of Ultimate Edition, the version 5.1. So Ultimate Edition is a Linux distribution based on Ubuntu 16.04, uses the KDE desktop from Kubuntu initially I think, so it's KDE Plasma 5.5.5. So it is a very garish and blingy distro, that is exactly what it is aiming for. There is nothing subtle about it. So I was looking at the release notes here on the Ultimate Edition website from the man. And says a little bit, just apologises for the time it has taken, yeah, talks a little bit how it has been built. But I was a bit surprised here. I hate KDE, no news there, but I believe I spent a ton of time refining it to make our users happy. Did I mention I hate KDE? Looks too much like that other operating system. Hmm. So, why did you use KDE then? I'm not saying everyone has to like KDE, but you're the distro creator. If you don't like it, use something else. Because unfortunately, the main feature of Ultimate Edition, being a very stylish distro, unfortunately isn't consistent throughout. So the one thing it really has going for it kind of doesn't really do well enough. And I was looking through this website as well and I noticed a few of these links are dead. <laughs> Ultimate Edition Oz does not exist anymore, which is a shame because uh, again, that was quite a well stylized version of Ubuntu. You can see the immediate bling on this desktop with the rather fancy rotating red mouse cursor and the fancy background as well. The layout of the desktop is pretty similar to the stock KDE desktop. We have the application launcher on the left hand side, a panel at the bottom of the screen, and a few shortcuts here on the bottom right hand side. So we've got instant messaging, volume control, network, a few hidden icons here. It's about the uh, standard selection you would get, time, date, and calendar. We also have a log off and shutdown button, as well as a system load monitor, which upon clicking it opens up the system monitor. You can see the style of the applications we've gone for here is uh, the ghost deco theme, which I rather like to use in the KDE 4 desktop. Now, whereas the KDE 4 desktop handled that perfectly fine, when we maximize the application here, you can see it doesn't look so well on the Plasma 5 desktop. Yeah, it hasn't got the theming quite right here. Now this is a big part of the issue here is the theming. You see, yes, we have the rather fancy mouse cursor here, but uh, upon moving to the edge of the application to resize here, it is, uh, no, that's just John gone to the breeze icon theme there. Not very good. And this is actually where I first noticed the problem, as simple as the application launcher. You can see the breeze icon theme showing through here. So I noticed a comment from the man is that uh, it looks too much like uh, that other operating system. But honestly, KD doesn't have to. And I can simply right click the application launcher there, select alternatives and go to an application dashboard. And uh, now it no longer looks like any other kind of operating system. Maybe it looks like Unity slightly. Perhaps that might be an issue as well. I know they never went down the Unity route. So well, maybe that's what they're actually worrying about. Who knows? It doesn't actually say specifically. You notice we have a custom application icon theme here. So this is a default one. Yes, we've got a custom theme on Firefox, System Settings, and Dolphin. And uh, looking for a few of these applications. I'm sorry, I didn't intend to look at the applications this early on in the distro, but to be honest, the unique feature of it is the theming. So we're going to need to look at the applications to get an idea of what the icon theme actually looks like. Something else I noticed was a bit odd. There's two application centers on here. Where was it? Uh, Ultimate Edition, I think it was this one. You'll notice this theming on the icons in the panel there at the bottom of the screen is a bit illegible, isn't it? Oh, and we've just got a crash. Okay, I was actually messing around with this earlier and it didn't do that. So that is a bit of a one-off thing. However, I know that Plasma 5.5.5 desktop isn't as stable as the latter 5.8 desktop that I'm using here in KDE Neon, and that you can get in Kubuntu backports, so it could have been done on this distro. I wanted to go back to describing how we have two different application installers on here. So we've got the Ultimate Edition Software Center, as well as the Moon Discover. It's Moon Discover. So Moon Discover, so we've got a nice fancy animation flowing there at the top. No such thing on the Ultimate Edition Software Center. 
do at least have the application ratings and reviews in both application centers. So it is a bit strange that they've included both on the one distro. Now I could appreciate it if it was like the Ultimate Edition Gamers version, which is also a distro you can get from Ultimate Edition that uh, I believe comes with the XFCE desktop. And I could see the point of including that, but not on the KDE version. Going across the system settings, I want to look at some of these theming options. So I'm not too impressed with the cursor theme, for instance. So look at the workspace themes. Uh, yeah, into the cursor theme. And you can see the problem here with this uh, demonstration at the top of the screen that uh, most of the cursor themes are not included for the default red cursor theme. Looking at something like this green or orange theme, you can see they're actually more complete. So why aren't those the default? Yeah, the blue and yellow ones seem to be missing uh, as well as the silver ones. So there's actually only two complete cursor themes on the system. So let's just increase the size of that slightly, apply it, and yeah, looks fine. So into the desktop theme, they've moved across to the breeze theme. And that is really the sort of theme you actually want to use nowadays. It's built more specifically for this desktop, and look, that looks a whole lot more legible now. You know, I was going to go across to the icon theme. So there's a few other icon themes included here. And you notice this one didn't look too bad, really. I, mean, I know we've got icons missing, but it didn't look so glaringly obvious. Whereas if I look at uh, this dark glow icon theme that I will say has been included in the distro. Not that I've just installed a third party one and uh, I'm now poking holes in something that wasn't initially included. No, this was included by default. And you can see here the blatant issue, even on the power and session, that you got icons missing. I'm not saying you should include icons for all known applications. I mean, it would be nice to, but uh, I, obviously there are thousands of applications, so it is a bit of a massive goal to achieve. But they need to at least be able to include all the applications and features that are on the system by default and include the theming of them. It doesn't even achieve that goal. No. And it's just so obvious. Look at that. On the settings, only one application icon there has the correct theme. And it's so different to the others. I would like the look of that theme across the whole system. I think that does look a nice icon theme. But when so few of them are actually correct, it just looks like what a letdown, really. I'd rather it wasn't there. This gold icon theme is slightly better. You might be thinking, so what do I care about the themes? But I'm looking at the whole package of the distro, what has been included. And from what I'm seeing, what has been included isn't necessarily all that suitable. The developers should have really looked at it and thought, are we going to be able to put in all the work necessary to make this theme look perfect on the operating system? And if they decide, no, they haven't got the necessary time, then really shouldn't have included it. That, that's kind of my opinion of it, really. I'd like to know what you guys think as well. I mean, does it bother you? I noticed that quite a few additional repositories have been added to Ultimate Edition. A mixture of enabled and disabled repositories there. So an interesting addition. Let's have a look at some of those that have been enabled. I guess we've got the standard security updates for Ubuntu. We also have Cinelera, GIMP, Google Earth, Wine, the Ultimate Edition Games and Applications, Boot Repair, Grub Customizer, the Xorg Edges repository, so you can get additional drivers for the graphics cards. That seems to be all that are enabled. And, and as you can see, there's quite a lot disabled. I suppose notable, you've got Get Deb, Games and Apps, which I always used to notice that uh, repository was a bit slow, but uh, yeah, I'm basing that on older information, so perhaps things have changed now. Yeah. Interesting addition. Don't worry about the lighter theme issue here, it's just because software sources is run with elevated privileges and doesn't have the dark theme there by default, it defaults to a light theme. There's quite a few different backgrounds included in Ultimate Edition. 
it's mainly a combination of wallpapers from their earlier releases. They're still very fancy. Uh, you just probably got to put up with having a different version number though, that's all. Oh, that one doesn't have a version number on it, but uh, take it to something like the one here. Yeah, that's uh, got a version number on it. But, hey, they still look uh, rather pretty really. So I'm going to grab the one here. Yep, excellent. So let's take a bit more of a look at these applications. Looking under graphics, I suppose you've got a bit of a mixture of um, applications that you may not know about, applications you don't necessarily need. Internet seems a little bit more to the point, this one. Uh, I think there's probably use for most of these applications here. Multimedia. But Caffeine, Caden Live, Cody, and Pyphos. Why do all those need to be there? Well, in making these videos on YouTube, I certainly do have a use for Caden Live. Pyphos. I I don't know, I've looked at this, uh, it's something to do with Pandora, but it's something I can't get. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, don't know then. So Pandora is only available in the United States, Australia and New Zealand. Now, was one of the creators Australian? Might be wrong on that, but if that's the case, then I suppose it would be a useful program for them, and perhaps they may not realise that Pandora is not available everywhere. We've got the majority of the LibreOffice suite, as well as a, a couple of other Office applications there. Mm. Settings. Oh, Windows wireless drivers. It's been a long time since I've come across this one, but isn't that the way of uh, actually installing a driver for Windows into Linux? Yeah, it's been so long since I last saw that application. So it could be a useful feature if you're struggling to get Wi-Fi going on your system. Utilities. So there's not much in the way of utilities on this system. In terms of the applications installed, it seems to be balanced more along the lines of like the day-to-day -day applications or the less than day-to-day -day applications. But overall, it has been difficult to be really positive about this distro. It's supposed to be a nice, fantastic looking operating system. That is what Ultimate Edition always was. It looked fantastic. And sadly, there are too many points where the original KDE Breeze themes show through. Or you've got the case where the panel at the bottom of the screen contained the illegible oxygen theme. And thanks for watching. See you all later.